Good morning. In the first part of this talk, I'm going to introduce you to a graphic tool to explain one of the goals of teaching big history. I call this tool Identity Cons. In the second part, I'm going to give you an update on the philanthropic proposal that I made in last year's conference. Earlier this year, several members of the association, we created the IBHA teaching group. We have had two meetings. In one of them, we discussed the purpose of teaching big history. There are several goals. One that we agreed on was that we want to create wider and shared identities at the human life and planetary levels. So the question that I'm going to address in this talk is how to explain this goal to students and to people that do not know anything about big history. One motivation for this talk is a lesson in, in the OER project Big History course. The lesson talks about modern states and identities, and it starts with a poll to the students asking them, who are you? And these are the questions to them. If they have a school identity, cultural, religious, gender-related identities. I was surprised not to see any question about national identity. And this is in a lesson that talks about the origin of the concept of nationalism. So now I'm going to give you a bit of my background for you to understand why this question was very important for me. I was born in Peru. And when I was 11 years old, my family and I emigrated to Venezuela. A few days before leaving Peru, an uncle asked me to, told me that I was going to represent Peru where, whatever I did in Venezuela and that I should leave the name of the country high. I did my best. And we visited Peru for the first time after five years after emigrating. And something that happened was that uh, some of our cousins, I mean, introduced my sisters and I to some friends of them. And those friends referred to us as your Venezuelan cousins. And then when we start chatting with them, they pointed out that we spoke exactly like in the Venezuelan soap operas. So that was funny because I was in Venezuela saying I'm Peruvian thinking I represent Peru, and then I go back to Peru and I'm told that I'm Venezuela. Well, another thing that happened when I emigrated was that in one of my first history lessons in Venezuela, I was taught that Simón Bolívar was the liberator of five South American countries, including Peru. And that was a shock to me, because in my primary school in Peru, I was taught that the liberator of Peru was José San Martín. Up to then, I had believed uh, what I was told at school literally, and uh, but that was a moment when I, I, I could not, I, I had to stop doing that because there was a contradiction. And that was one of the seeds of my interest in history and the teaching of history in different countries. Another seed about my interest in history was that I was very lucky to participate in a Venezuelan mathematical competition and, uh, and to win as a prize this set of books, which are the Spanish version of this mathematical encyclopedia. This mathematical encyclopedia fed my passion for mathematics, but also started my passion for history of mathematics. Now, long story short, over the years, I became fond of histories of different countries, knowledge areas, arts, technology, companies. I decided at some point to be a fan of uh, history of anything. Now, when I was 20 years old or something, uh, around 20 years old, by pure chance, I was in a meeting where there were some people taking for granted that there will be hunger in a few years around the world. And uh, that led me, I mean, I was very focused on my university studies and I didn't know anything about the world. Well, anyway, that led me to, to question, what do I want to do in life? Now, to answer that question, I decided to answer this question before. What am I? Which is similar to the poll I mentioned at the beginning. Now, I guess it's my mathematical background that led me to answer this question using what we call in mathematics a Venn diagram. The way I answered the question was this one. I am an individual, I'm part of a family, part of a country. Well, no, not really, I'm part of two countries. I actually realized at some point that I don't need to choose one of those two national identities, that I can add identities instead of replacing. Last year, actually, I met someone that when I, he asked me, where are you from? And I said, Peruvian, Venezuela. And he pushed me to try to choose. I mean, he asked me, but what do you feel more, Peruvian or Venezuela? And I answered to him, look, to ask me that is like asking me if I love more my mom or my dad. Well, going back to when I was uh, around 20 years old, uh, I, I also said, well, I'm Latin American, I'm a member of the world. Now, this thing about adding instead of replacing is, is more complex. Uh, because like most Latin Americans, I have mixed origins. 
this is a family picture. I'm uh, at the bottom of the picture with uh, my older sister and, and some uncles, aunts, and my dad. But uh, here you can see three of my grandparents, and you can see that they are very mixed. Well, one of them was Chinese. So in the last year, I decided to do a DNA test to check my, my origins, and this is what came up with. And I was not surprised to see West Africa there, because my mom, when we watch uh, this miniseries when I was a kid, she emphasized to us that we had African uh, slave uh, blood in our veins. And actually, that made the miniseries even more impactful than what it already is. Okay, so this is, I mean, according to the DNA test, I am a one-third uh, indigenous Peruvian, one-quarter Chinese, 22% Spanish, and like 12% uh, African. Now, this Venn diagram helped me to decide what do I want to do in life in the following ways. Uh, one was that I realized that when we are children, we focus on developing as individuals, and later we focus on our families. And I, I noticed that as they got older, some role models like Benjamin Franklin focus on wider groups. And I also noticed that uh, there are some misaligned goals. I call that some goals that are good for one level, but not for other levels. Just as an example, if I am an individual in a developing country and I want to further my career professionally, I want to emigrate to a developed country to, to improve my professional career. Well, that may be great for me as an individual and for my family, but that's not great for my country or countries of origin. Uh, especially back then when telecommunication, I mean, in the 80s when the telecommunications were not that, as great as now. Now, I also realized that there are some goals that I call aligned that are good at all levels or at least good for some levels and not bad for others. For example, my hobby of uh, uh, learning about history of anything, I was enjoyed that very much as an individual and that was good for my family and maybe could be good for, for other groups, at least it was not bad for them. Now, <clears throat> uh, many years later, in Barcelona, I bought this book, the Spanish version of uh, this French book. This was my first contact with what we nowadays call uh, Big History. This is an English version of uh, this book. Here, a journalist interviews an astrophysicist, uh, a biologist, and a paleoanthropologist about our origins at different levels. Now, that was helpful a few years later when my wife and I had emigrated to, to London and, and we had very young kids. And, uh, and I wondered which stories do I tell them? And uh, what I decided to answer that question was to add to that Venn diagram that I showed earlier, to add a dimension, another dimension, which is time. And let's put time in the horizontal axis. So now I represent an individual as a cone. And the vertex or the, the tip of the cone represents the birth of the individual. And that's something that uh, we celebrate, happy birthday. If a family is lucky, the family started with a, with a wedding. And um, that, um, that's also celebrated. I mean, we celebrate wedding anniversaries. And uh, at least in the Americas, uh, Independence Day is, is uh, Independence Day is our national holidays. So the, in that case, the, the vertex of the cone, the tip, is, is the Independence Day. Now, unfortunately, we don't celebrate anything at, at this level. Regarding this level, one of the first books I read was this one. And um, I was very surprised. It caught my eye that uh, how passionate was Richard Leakey writing about all humans. And then I learned that uh, he's part of this famous family of paleoanthropologists that have been studying uh, human origins uh, for decades in, in East Africa. And what I thought was, well, no wonder. I mean, he has been studying that origin for such a long time that he has developed feelings of identity, with strong feelings of identity with, with all humans. So I had this idea that uh, when you study the origins of one level, you, you develop feelings of identity for that level. And, uh, and regarding the next level life, uh, one test I decided to, to make, I mean, it's a, 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 it's a small thing, but uh, it occurred to me 
I wonder who were the first ecologists? I mean, who were the people that started the environmental movement? My my hypothesis was that because biologists are the ones that study life, that it would have been they would have been biologists. I didn't know how they started. And I decided well to search and investigate. And I found that this is considered one of the first uh, very influential books um, kicking off the environmental movement. And and indeed, Rachel Carson was a marine biologist. Well, of course, we have uh, then the Earth level and the universe one, and, and this is what I call identity cones. And in all this, my motto is adding instead of replacing. We don't need to replace identities. We can add more and more identities. Now, regarding which stories do I tell my kids, what I realize is when they are so young, I mean, really, as a parent, you have a big responsibility. You can shape their mind in so many ways. I realized, for example, if I wanted them to become vegetarians, I could emphasize this, this con, but uh, also some person could decide to emphasize arbitrarily well, uh, this other con uh, uh, and, and make them feel strongly about vertebrates. Anyway, what I decided is to try to show them all, uh, introduce them to all these different levels in a balanced way. And uh, my tools were, well, trying to find children's books. And I recall going to Amazon without knowing the name of the writers or the name of the books. But I put there some keywords and, and I found several books. But the best one I found back then was this one. And this book has this structure. It shows four images of four places in the world today. And it starts going back in time, some centuries, some millennia, and it keeps going farther back in time, back and back, and, and millions of years back. And it ends up talking about the origin of life and also about the big man. Uh, now, regarding the biblical story, well, I come from a Catholic family. Uh, I decided to actually teach them this, but saying, according to the Bible, this is a creation story. And in the previous one, I was saying, according to the scientists, this is the, 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 the creation story. Now, what does this have to do with big history? In another OER project course, the World of History one, Bob Bain has this article where he introduces big history by posing a question. Are they thresholds of increasing complexity or for movements? Well, the thresholds of increasing complexity, well, this diagram is the backbone of the big history course in the OER project. And um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with it. Uh, the four movements are uh, from a book by Walter Alvarez. Um, he has there uh, this Venn diagram similar to, to the one I was showing before. So I think that we can see the, the, the identity cones as integrating these two two-dimensional diagrams, uh, similarly like when you have a complex object and you project, you do the graphical projection or the shadows on some walls. So in this case, the G and E are two dimensionals, but there is some complex three dimensional object in the middle. So, so th this is the way I see it. Uh, that the identity cones are these, these three dimensional objects that integrate these points of, two points of view. Well, the, the chronology, the David Christian chronology is not exactly a graphical projection of this because the graphical projection would be just a set of triangles, no? which well, I, at some point I used to do that. Um, anyway, so I, I guess this is the main point of, of the talk. I mean, the, the, this graphic tool that integrates these two points of view. And I hope you see how I think that this tool helps to explain the goal of creating wider identities at the human life and planetary levels. Now, actually a logical step would be also to talk at, about the cosmic level. And then I think actually, if you study all these levels, uh, all of them, maybe you can develop pantheistic feelings of um, oneness with the universe um, that uh, are a type, this, that's a type of uh, religious experience. But that, we, we could talk uh, at another time. Now I want to move into the second part of the talk, uh, where I want to give you an update on what I proposed uh, last year. Well, uh, uh, my talk last year, uh, my first talk last year became this this paper in the Journal of the Association. And, uh, and well, my proposal was to try to do something about this great inequality, that some people have access to very good book collections and most do not. 
Now, very good book collections can be interpreted in a variety of ways. Let me just give you a very simple one. I think that in developed countries, we take for granted um, that primary schools are have a, a nice, good library with children's books. Uh, but there are many developing countries where that's not the case. And just to remind you, my proposal was that nowadays, uh, thanks to electronic libraries, uh, a person in a developed country can take a set of published books, create a personal book collection, and that person can buy again the the that collection and ship it to to another continent, to another uh, country, and publish it in public libraries. Okay, so. Uh, I have called that reproduction or copying, but I'm, I'm not saying about photocopying or anything. I'm, buy, I'm talking about buying again the books, the published books, um, and make them available in public libraries. So my proposal was to try to do that with a variety of uh, developing countries. And I'm talking about adding instead of replacing. One way of looking at this proposal is that uh, instead of what many people are thinking is that in, that internet replaces the old information network of books and libraries. What I think is that we can use the new information network, internet, to improve the old one. And well, and let me show you what I have been doing in the last year. I have been donating books to the African Big History Association. Um, Eric uh, from that association is there in that picture with several of the books. So I have sent. Uh, well, big history books that deal about all these levels, children's books also, uh, then some books specific for some uh, levels, uh, the universe, earth, life, uh, humans. Now, do you see that that little arm there? That is um, Astera, uh, Eric's daughter, and there she is with uh, one of the books I sent. Now, this book is obviously about this, this uh, con. Um, this book uh, starts with the origin of life and ends with the tree of life. Now, something I like particularly about the book is that it's written in the first person plural. I mean, it talks about our family tree and then it says we, we, we all over the place. Now, I was very surprised to see in Goodreads in some reviews of this book that actually some people have the opposite feeling. Some people dislike the use of the word we. And I don't understand it really. Uh, uh, just to give an example from other context, in sports fans, I mean, like proper fans of some teams, they speak about the results of their team as we won, we lost, because they really identify with their team. So I don't see why we cannot use we for team human and team life. I have also sent books uh, about the histories of some individuals that I can think uh, can serve as role models. Uh, if you have not seen this uh, Netflix movie, I I'd highly recommend it. Um, uh, this is a more recent picture of when some children books arrive. And uh, that book uh, there is is this one, uh, which is part of this collection. It's also al always trying to find the story of something. Uh, and that book there is this one, uh, which is part of this collection of a uh, great woman who made history. So I think you can see now how this idea of the identity cons has guides me in choosing the books uh, and uh, and how it, it helps to answer the question I posed at the beginning. So uh, as I said, you can contact me to if you want to join the IBHA uh, teaching group. And I would like to finish with an audio from Eric. Those books for the little children like perhaps the hidden figures my daughter loves enjoying it so much. <laughs> last, uh, that was last Tuesday, she called two of my neighbor's children. They were reading and they were enjoying the books, good pictures and good information. She really enjoyed the books. The children are free to come sign out books, go read them at home and then return them back to school. It's always in the school uh, library. The school founder saw it wise. With with us to share the ideas. The children love the books. Actually, I want to about the universe as well as the story of dinosaurs. They love reading those books so much. And they always return back to, to me asking for some clarifications about how the, the story of the dinosaurs, how the space is all like. The, the books, I we think that as we are going to go in this July, 
in, in orphanage school around Dimaco, who equally share those books there with the orphans and let them know a, a little hidden ideas about the world and the books and about the history where we are. In as much as that is concerned, we will actually need more books because we need to go to, to more schools so that the books could be extending. 